Okay, I got asked this question a lot, uh, especially with my release of my 422 Canon video. So, can you actually shoot an Ender Pearl into space? The simple answer is maybe depending on your physics. So, let's start off with Earth. Earth uh, attracts things using a force known as gravity. So, let's take a random space object here, and let's just kind of take a look at why this space object isn't getting pulled toward Earth. So, the ISS actually uh, orbits Earth, which is basically moving very fast around it. So that places it in orbit. So, if it's moving very fast, it won't fall towards Earth. Here, here's our ISS, and here's our Earth. So, let's show our momentum of the ISS and its gravity. The gravity is obviously pointing towards Earth, and the momentum is obviously going on a 90 degree offset, or not perfectly 90 degrees, but an offset from gravity, basically. So, let's track where the momentum and gravity bring the ISS. As you can see, the ISS doesn't really fall towards Earth, but it is always falling. It keeps on falling towards Earth, however, the ground curves away because of the momentum. Because just as fast as you're going is just as fast as the ground is being pulled away. So, how fast does this momentum need to be in order to keep you in this orbit? Well, it actually needs to be 17,000 kilometers an hour, or 8 kilometers a second. So, now let's replace our ISS with an ender pearl. How much TNT do you need to send it to low Earth orbit? Well, this here is the average speed for TNT cannons, which accelerate pearls, and that number is given to the pearl in each horizontal axis. So, that means that you get uh, one of these in the x-axis and one of these in the z-axis. So, we need to get this thing to 8 kilometers a second. So, what we need to do is we need to get the velocity in blocks per tick. We need to get the distance in meters. Uh, or you don't really need to get it in meters, it's just a lot nicer to do the math that way. So, uh, 8, th or sorry, eight uh, kilometers a second is 8,000 meters a second. So now we need to uh, get in ticks, which is 1 20th of a second. So we divide the number per uh, by 20. So now we're left with 400 blocks per tick, uh, which is 1 meter equals 1 block. So now we have to use Pythagorean theorem to calculate the velocity given in one axis as opposed to two. So you use your number and raise it to the second and just add it again because you're going the same distance because the TNT is placed diagonally uh, to the pearl. So, uh, with that we can solve for C, which is going to be our velocity. So let's go through the math. Here you can see the equation set up. Now we get uh, both numbers added up uh, and also squared. Now you have to do square roots. And now you get your final uh, velocity per TNT. So, now that we have our velocity per TNT, uh, we need to figure out how much TNT we need in order to get our pearl to travel at 400 blocks per tick. So, 400 over our number of velocity is 475 TNT. So that is the amount of TNT that it would need, assuming that you have no uh, drag or anything applied to the pearl. It's just completely frictionless, and it'll just stay up there in low Earth orbit. So, that's the amount of TNT that you need to get into low Earth orbit, but my friend, Penta Steve, was really nice, and he actually did the math to escape Earth's orbit. So, what you would need is you would need 664 TNT, uh, but there still is some sort of an issue with these numbers, which is that... Uh, with real physics, you have things like uh, atmospheric drag, so when you actually are acce accelerating your pearl, your pearl will be slowed down by air and some other parts of the atmosphere. Obviously, you also have gravity to, to deal with, because you're still uh, being attracted by the Earth. So there still are some issues, uh, mainly on ascent, but it should 
uh, work with a, a decently larger number of TNT. So let's assume that it takes double the amount of TNT to put you into low Earth orbit, which it would take way less than that, but let's just assume it was that. You are still more than capable of accelerating the Pearl to that speed. Uh, so the average Pearl Cannon, uh, at least the types that uh, I build, contain around 200 and, uh, sorry, 2,299 TNT per side, which is 4,598 TNT total throughout the whole cannon, and that means that our Pearl is more than fine to be shot up. Uh, but there is a issue. So air friction, which happens in the lower Earth atmosphere mainly, uh, as a issue. So this is called atmospheric decay, and it's where the air can't move out of the pearl's path in time, and it densifies with other air air, mo uh, air molecules, and it basically uh, leads to the air becoming very hot, and it would basically melt the pearl before it even reaches space, or even uh, leaves the Earth's atmosphere. So, if your pearl is indestructible, however, like the ones in Minecraft, it would be perfectly fine to launch them at such high speeds. So yeah, thanks for watching, and go sub to Penta.